Thanks, Tikva. So my name's Fred Benenson. I'm the data engineer at Kickstarter. In my spare time, I like to think about the future of technology, artificial intelligence, and how machine learning is going to change the world. Tonight, I'm here to tell you a slightly dystopian story about how we may be unwittingly training Skynet via the darknet. So as you'll recall, Skynet is the machine in the Terminator series that becomes self-aware on August 27th, 1997, launches a nuclear attack against the humans, and kills a billion people. The remaining humans, forced underground, start a human rebellion and start fighting the machines. The sky of the future starts sending Terminator robots back to the past to kill the humans and their parents that would eventually start the revolution. It's one of the best time travel plot devices ever, and if you haven't seen the Terminator series, I highly recommend it. Okay, so maybe 1997's too early for machines to become self-aware, but does Ray Kurzweil know what he's talking about when he says the singularity's coming? <laughs> that machines are gonna become more intelligent than us? More self-aware than us? Well, before that happens, they'll probably be just as intelligent as us, so what's that point? When's that gonna happen? Alan Turing, the father of modern computer science, can help us here. He's the guy that came up with the Turing test, which says a machine exhibits intelligent behavior if it can dupe a human being into believing that it too is a human being. Around the same time that Turing had come up with the Turing test, a science fiction writer named Isaac Asimov um, was writing really great short stories about robots. In one of those short stories, he codified the three rules of robotics. The first and most important one is that a robot may not injure a human being. Um, and and he, he intended these for, for these to be applied everywhere, but something tells me Skynet's not an Asimov fan. So these days, Turing tests are all over the web in the form of CAPTCHAs, completely automated public Turing tests to tell computers and humans apart. They're designed to prevent robots from signing up for email accounts, writing spam comments, and that kind of thing. They're actually kind of like reverse Turing tests because it's a robot testing us. But they're really problematic for two reasons. One, they're getting really hard to do. They're, they're usability problems. But two, we're training the dark net to learn what it is to be human. As Turing said, if they can pass this test, they're exhibiting human intelligence. I'll think about that. So st artificial intelligence researchers are now using CAPTCHAs to build stronger and better visual recognition algorithms. Um, and, and some of these papers are getting used to break like PayPal and Yahoo and Live Journal's CAPTCHA systems. So this research isn't purely academic. This is a screenshot from a presentation on Stiltwalker, which is a uh, algorithm which uses neural networks to defeat reCAPTCHA's audio test. This is a machine learning program built by hackers that passes the Turing test using a computational model of our own brain. So if you want to get a good idea of what's happening on the dark net and, and where, where strong artificial intelligence is going, you just need to look at the prices of that. So the next slide is a set of prices for a thousand email accounts on the dark net. You can just look up bulk email and, and start buying a thousand accounts. Gmail's $35, Hotmail's around $13. But as these prices go up and down, these email accounts, are the, the robots become smarter and smarter. So this is scary. The dark net is rewarding people who are advancing artificial intelligence with financial gain. This is where thousands of people working on the same problem result in emergent behavior. This is how the invisible hand of the market starts training Skynet. So these days, uh, there's lots of examples of this going on. At the University of Texas, they're building robots to play Unreal Tournament. It turns out the robots aren't really believable. They don't pass the Turing test unless they do kind of dumb things and say stupid things while playing the video game. <laughs> the, results of this, the results of this contest are, it just came out a couple of weeks ago, the two, 2012 ones, and a robot was able to choose a humanist, uh, achieve a humanist factor 52% of the time. That means a judge rated it more human than the humans that were playing the game. So. Indeed, like, if you go all the way back, when Kasparov lost to Deep Blue, he lost over a move that he couldn't believe a machine made. So to be believably human, to be a little bit intelligent, you have to be a little, the machine has to be a little bit dumb. In Nate Silver's new book, he reveals how this move may have been actually a glitch, a random choice. Turing predicted this. He knew that for computers to be believable, to exhibit believable human intelligence, they had to answer questions kind of slowly and sometimes incorrectly. If they answered a mathematical question too quickly, it would be obvious that it was a computer. Here's another example from the dark net. This is a piece of junky software called Wicked Article Creator. All you have to do is click on a button and it uses context-free grammars to generate pieces of content. One click and you're suddenly writing dozens of blog posts about weight loss. <laughs> Google believes this is content written by a human being. My friend Clive recently blogged about his interaction with a bot on, on AIM recently, where, which solicited him, solicited him for sex. You probably spent some time talking to baby girl 1475. Um, <laughs> That's okay. But the point is, this is, this is production code, living in the wild. Finally, 
there's his civil rights CAPTCHA, which came out a couple weeks ago. This is a CAPTCHA system designed to test our empathy and our understanding of world politics, to politics by asking us questions about civil rights. So what if the robots figured this one out and started asking questions using their well-developed empathy? I think it's better than the alternative that Skynet envisioned. So if you want to talk about the future of artificial intelligence, data, Kickstarter, or just how awesome Terminator 2 is, drop me a line at Fred Benenson. Thanks, guys.